looking at it retrospectively, it's, it's amazingly accurate. Hello, my loves. Welcome back to the Lavender Lifestyle Podcast. It's Eileen. Happy New Year. Today, I am so excited to bring you this fascinating episode about numerology. So get ready to learn all about what this year has in store for you, your theme and the lessons you're meant to learn this year, as well as the meaning behind all the numbers in your life, from your birthday to your name, house number, phone number, and beyond. Our guest today is Joy Woodward. Joy is an internationally recognized expert numerologist. She's the best-selling author of A Beginner's Guide to Numerology that has now been translated into several languages. Joy has read thousands of people from all around the globe, consulted on media productions, and for celebrity clientele. Her intuitive readings specialize in personal cycles, working with the moon, date selection, love, math, and compatibility, fertility dating, name changes, and resolving cards. She lives by the numbers in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada with her husband and her dog Wolfgang. Before we begin, a quick reminder to get your copy of the 2023 Artist of Life workbook to plan your best year this year. With exercises on self-discovery, goal setting, habit tracking, and more, it's a guided tool to take you from where you are to where you want to be. You can check it out at shop.lavendaire.com. Hello, Joy. Welcome to the Lavender Lifestyle Podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing fabulously. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm so excited to have you on because I love like numerology. I just love this world of like learning about ourselves in these mystical ways. (laughs) So why don't you start by telling us what is numerology and how did you get into it? All right. Um, So numerology is based on your birth certificate. And your day and time, day of birth. So it doesn't take the time into account like astrology, but numerology and astrology really complement each other. They seldom contradict. But your birth certificate name is what reveals your soul contract and all the lessons you agreed to learn in this lifetime. It shows any karmic debt and karmic lessons that you may have brought forward that you want to learn about. And it really can reveal. Um, your destiny, compatibility, uh, why you get along with certain people, why you don't, why some things really, you know, you just feel like you're walking around with a full tank of gas and it's easy to get things done and why other times things just stall. It, It gives you sort of a drumbeat for your life. And if you can get in tune with that and follow it, um, it really makes your life flow easier. Amazing. So the second question was, how did you get into it? And I want to know how long you've been studying numerology. I, it was a total accident. Um, I had a reading and I remember after my reading, I thought, oh my gosh, like I just feel seen. Like that's why I have problems with authority figures. That's why I, you know, this is sort of one of my character traits. Um, And I realize now that it was, it wasn't really a very deep reading, but it gave me enough to really get me interested. At the time, I was a super, super corporate person. (laughs) And I had about, you know, 25 people reporting to me. And, you know, I was, I was really hardcore. So it definitely, when I started doing numerology, um, I remember I was at a party and uh, it was for one of my friend's birthdays and people actually started lining up. So I would tell them about themselves because they were exchanging gifts. And I was like, oh, she's got to be a six. That was so thoughtful. Like <laughs> sixes wow. always give really good <laughs> gifts. Yeah. And then, um, you know, they, people just wanted more. And my friend started giving out my number. And I said, what do you want me to do with these people? And she's like, just do what you do for me. Like, just help Mm. them, tell them, you know, whatever. And so eventually I left corporate. um, And then I tried to go back to it. And the universe had other plans. And it was like, no, this isn't for you anymore. (laughs) So they just presented with clients. And, you know, the joy of numerology was born. So it all kind of flowed like it you it all flowed naturally in that direction it did I mean I tried to fight it I did not think this was a real gig (laughs) I was like 
this is what especially if you were like focus. managing people in corporate <laughs> oh I was hardcore and if you lied yeah. to me like I I was like now I have to bury you like oh my god <laughs> <you have> a <laughs> problem. wow yeah but uh it was right around the time I got married and I ended up changing my name and a name change can definitely impact all sorts of things and um it really changed my career numbers. I don't think without the name change, I would have ended up here. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that is so interesting. So now I'm sure people are wondering like, oh my God, if I change my name, what's going to change? There's all these implications. Like everything can be tied to a number, right? Absolutely. And when you think about when people get married, there's always two things that can happen. You can get married, change your name, And then all of a sudden, you know, they're not compatible anymore. So I like it when people match on their birth date numbers. And those marriages only tend to last like two to three years. And then you also have a maturity number that you really have to look out for. And that's the one that predicts sort of a long marriage or if you're going to have trouble when, you know, you kind of reach your mid 40s, 50s, that you could become toxic to your partner depending on how you're matching. So when I do love matches, I like it when people have birthday um, commonalities where they really can match there. It's a much stronger connection. If your birthdays match, it's better than if your names match? For for marriage, for sure. And I don't like the matchy-matchy, but there's, you know, things that are just harmonious. And then there's things that aren't. And it's why we get along with some people and why we can't stand others. (laughs) I'm sure just by hearing that, a lot of listeners like, I need to, I need to get her consultation. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have, I've I have, even like, sign me up. I need, I need this love match. Yeah. <laughs> I have some clients that just constantly, they do a lot of internet dating. They're texting me like, is this guy a dog? And I'm like, well, he feels very differently about loyalty than you do. Or wow. he has the same number as Tiger Woods. You figure it out. Oh. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> wow. That's so fascinating. Okay. Um, Before we get too deep into that, let's start with the basics, right? What are all the ways that we can learn about ourselves through numerology? Like where, I guess, where where do you want to start? Well, everything is based on numbers one through nine. So everything just reduces until it hits that single digit. Um, Your life path number is the one that is from your total complete day of birth. That one's pretty easy for people to figure out. You just add everything in your complete day of birth, including the year together. Um, When you get a little bit deeper, you want to sort of break it down birthday, month, year, because otherwise you miss master numbers or you miss karmic debt. And those can tell you quite a bit. But that number is sort of like the umbrella. It's Mm going to give you a theme for your entire life. And that one you can't change. It doesn't matter what you do to your name or anything else. That one stays with you. Um, Then I like to look at people's soul numbers. And the soul number is the one that really reveals your inner um, kind of private self. This is the one where you really want to make sure you're compatible if you're looking for a love match. Um, Or even when people do baby names for their children, you want to make sure that your children are, you're going to be able to understand them and help them. Right. Wow. And so um, that one is from all the vowels in your name. So every letter gets a numerical value. And I have, there's a formulas page on my website that tells you all this if people want to figure out their own charts. And then the personality numbers, the one I usually look at next, that one reveals sort of how what kind of career you might be attracted to. Um, And I know when I looked at your numbers, um, your career number is the one of the storyteller. It's big on communications. They like the spotlight. They usually can build sort of a strong foundation of, um, you know, media, marketing, that kind of thing. And they're great. Yeah. So that's a, it just makes so much sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And the personality number comes from all the consonants in your name. And so then we look at the destiny number, which is all of the letters put together. 
So your soul plus personality will equal your destiny number. That one also speaks to career, but it it's sort of secondary to your life path number. It has a bigger theme, but there's always special gifts revealed there about what you'll be good at, what you'll be drawn to. Um, and a lot of times in love matches, people's destiny numbers are harmonious as well. And that's always kind of nice. Um, and then I look at the birthday number. So that's simply the day you're born. So you can get okay. a lot of information just from someone's birthday, even if you don't like have the, their... Not the month, but just the day? Just the day. So for you, okay. it's um, 21, 21. So that's a three. So I add two plus one. Um, and three is the communicator. Um, they love the spotlight. They usually have nice voices and big, friendly smiles. <laughs> you, yeah. you Those are the compliments people give me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that you come by that very honestly. Um, so that's in your destiny number. So if, or sorry, your birthday number. So if I had to pick a career for you with that five and the three, um, I would absolutely say some type of media would, you'd be really good at, some kind of promotion. Um, that would be a natural fit for you. Um, and then at, after the birthday number, you want to look at the maturity number. That is the one that you people don't really start to grow into it until their 40s or 50s. So it would depend how old you are, how how important it is to you in any given moment. Um, and what does that mean? Well, if you're if you're like maturity 30 number. or 20, do you know mm -hmm. it's not going to really be showing itself yet. But if you take um, someone like Chris Rock and his wife who are married for 27 years and then all of a sudden they're like, we're done. And it's like, wow, how did you make it work for that long? And then all of a sudden you don't. But one of their um, maturity numbers changed and they became toxic to one another. And then that's, that's a wrap. Right, right. So maturity, is it how you're going to change at like you know, the middle of your life? Yeah, like a lot of people call it a midlife crisis. And even if you look at how it affects some people and not others, um, that is very much based on whether some people's don't change. Some people stay the same. Some people don't even really notice it. Other people are out, you know, dyeing their hair blue, buying a sports car, doing, you know, going to Bali, doing their eat, pray, love tour. Like, yeah. So it really just depends. Um, but that number can reveal to you sort of how you're, what's going to be important to you for the second sort of act of your life. Um, and then there's things that you can see in a chart about karma, um, what's revealed to you in, in terms of what energy you're missing, where you maybe will have to work a little harder on some stuff that you're not naturally sort of gifted towards. Um, and then karmic debt, and that's things you're making up for in a past lifetime. Super interesting. And karmic debt, is that, how is that calculated? Is it also birthday? No, it comes from how things are totaled. So karmic debt numbers are 13, 14, 16, and 19. So ultimately, 14 becomes a 5, 19 becomes a 1. Um, but they reveal sort of things that you may be abused in a past lifetime. So I know 19, 1 is abuse of power. So that one, people have trouble with authority figures. 14.5 um, is overindulgence, and it wants to teach you moderation. So it's the same as temperance in the tarot deck would be 14.5. 14 14.5 5. 14 5 is going to teach you about um, moderation in this lifetime. And a lot of people with that number struggle with some serious addictions from both uh, sides. They learn to right. love people with addictions, and they learn how to handle their own. Right, right. So these are lessons that we have to learn in this lifetime. It, it's more like makeup for things you did in a past lifetime. Karmic lessons are the missing energy. And those are things you want to learn about. I love it. Okay, so where should we go next? I want you to run us through like, I guess the nine digits, because I know each number carries an, an energy. So why don't we start with that? And do you think just by telling us the meaning of those dig digits, it's you're able to like understand because because there's so many different things that you just explained. There was like life path, soul number. So you know, does each number have the same meaning for each of those categories? Yes and no. Um, I can give you an overall general. When it's placed in different spots, it does take on a little bit of a different spin. 
But overall, that theme is still going to remain the same. Okay, got it. Okay. So we'll start with one. One energy is independent. It stands alone. Um, a lot of times they are unique looking. These are the people that like to be sort of originals. Lady Gaga is a one. So is um, Justin Bieber. Miley Cyrus. Um, yeah, it's independent. They kind of, you know, have their own drumbeat going on. They're not really followers. One has a lot of leadership energy. And a lot of ones are entrepreneurs. Um, they like to have their own company. They don't necessarily do well if they're working for other people. They, they like to be in charge. They like to be the boss. Um, in a relationship, they've got to be careful that they're not just saying, I can do this all alone, right? And then they end up alone because they put that out there. Um, but yeah, one is, is a starter. They're really good at getting people excited about their ideas. They're not so good at finishing things. That's not their forte. They're, they're the ones who just get everyone excited, get everyone on board, and then they prefer to sort of move on to the next. Okay. okay. Um, two energy, uh, is very sensitive. These are the people that like to be in a couple, um, a lot of times I see twos that have their next girlfriend or boyfriend, you know, lined up before they're yeah. actually right out of that other relationship. <laughs> they kind of go into the other. Um, they come in J-Lo. pairs. J-Lo uh, is a two. She's the marrying kind for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but two energy is very kind. They don't enjoy the spotlight. They're sort of more of the power behind the throne type. They would rather lead from behind. And they'll always try and smooth everything over and make sure everybody's getting along. Um, a nice way to look at the one and two is a, a really clear example. If you think of everyone born pre 2000, they all have a one in front of their year of birth. So 19, whatever we were told things like, if you're not winning, you're losing. If you don't do it, no one will like look out for you. Yeah. The fact that there was a one in the year, we already have that in our upbringing. And then starting from the 2000s, these kids are different. They're very different. Oh, Everyone yeah. That's a trophy. Like, yeah. There were no trophy. When you were winning, you were losing. <laughs> you yeah. Know oh, that's yeah, so fascinating. And they're very much about helping each other. And two heads yes. are better than one. Teamwork. And wow. you know, pre that, we were definitely raised with some very different Yeah, with competition. And, Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's so fascinating. So that's it. a good way to kind of really get a handle on the difference there. And so a lot of times you'll end up with a one and a two in your chart. And a lot of those people can be hard to figure out. They need to work harder at sort of staying grounded and being focused. So yeah, but two energy, um, a lot of twos have allergies. They're very sensitive. Um, someone like Teresa Caputo, Long Island Medium, she has three 11 twos in her chart. So she's got that sort of direct communication to the other side, very intuitive, very sensitive. Um, but overall, twos will always try and mediate things and make things smooth. A lot of them are psychologists, therapists, um, you know, that, that type of career tracks them. So you're saying, I mean, I understand this is the life path number, but when you're saying even if you have that digit in your birthday, it still applies to you in some way. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, for example, I have a two, I have a one, right? Yep. So <laughs> it all applies. It's okay. It does. Yeah. It just depends okay. where it shows up, how it will, how it will impact your personality or more your career. Um, yeah. So the three energy this is the one that really loves the spotlight and you've got that three birthday, right? So, but as a life path, these are people that, um, like Cameron Diaz, you know, she says that big smile and she's, you know, fills the screen. Um, but three energy rules communication. And so these people, a lot of times are writers, they're communicators, three rules, creativity, Van Gogh is a three. Um, and so, when you have that creative energy, it's important that you use it. If you don't have an outlet for it, these people can be incredibly emotional. So wherever the three falls in your chart, if it's there, you need to find yourself a creative outlet. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's all about expansion. Threes always want everything to get bigger. So 
if you three is really easy to pick out in children because everything is like so big and so loud and you know um but they tend to exaggerate a little bit they're also very good connectors so threes are the people that always have a guy like oh you need some drywall done my neighbor does drywall oh you like my hair here's my hairdresser's card like (laughs) they always sort of they're good at connecting people and so when you're in three energy which is about your timeline I like it when people think of that connector as the universe and they really get out there and help the universe make connections for them. But we're not talking about that right now. We'll get there. (laughs) Um, Four is the number of foundation. It likes everything to be really sort of in the lines. If you think of the flow lines of a four, they're very sharp and sort of straight. Um, the name Karen actually comes out as a four. If you look oh, that's, that. that's perfect. <laughs> it does. <laughs> like it's rigid, solid. Right? Yeah. That's, like that's funny. It likes rules. Wow. It likes justice. It wants oh everything my to be fair. That's um, funny. But four, four is very visionary as well. Um, but it, it likes things to be sort of in order. You need fours Ooh. because they're the ones that write the policies and the procedures and make sure everyone stays in line and enforces the rules. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be easy to remember for me from now on. <laughs> um, five energy is the most sort of exploratory, I guess I would say. They are ruled by the five senses. So they want to taste, smell, see, touch, like hear everything. Um, they usually are people that would rather spend their money on experiences than things. <laughs> That's and me, for sure. A lot of times it's really hard for them to commit. So I always say the quickest way to get a five to break up with you is to ask them to marry you or move in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, gotta go. Um, <laughs> yeah, so the five, though, is really, um, it can be impulsive. You want to sort of guard against that. Um, And they can be very committed to the right person, but it has to be their decision. So if they feel trapped or closed in, that's where they get kind of cagey and start creating, I call it fake drama. It's like poke the bear, (laughs) create some fake drama. Yeah. Um, But overall, the five is about adventure and freedom. And I would say with a five, it's time to get out of your box, expect the unexpected. (laughs) And then six, sorry, six energy. If you think of the flow lines of a six, it looks like a little pregnant lady. Um, They are the nurturers. They're the ones that want to take care of everybody. Um, They often are sort of the ones mothering other people and being a little bit over involved in things that perhaps don't always involve them. (laughs) Six energy is ruled by beauty and love. And so I would say if there were no sixes, the world wouldn't be a very pretty place. So um, sixes are the ones that make sure everything looks aesthetically pleasing. A lot of them are teachers, therapists, psychologists. They're, they're very compatible with two energy. They're drawn to the same careers and things. Um, but sixes they either tend to have a litter of children or no children. So (laughs) it's one or the other. Um, But if they don't have children, they often have pets that they treat like children. So uh, they love their animals and animals love them. You can always tell if there's someone who has a lot of six energy because all the animal, they're like snow white. They'll just gravitate towards them. Interesting. Um, And they really love their, their home, their nest. That's always really important to them as well. Um, and there's a lot of creative energy with six as well. So they have to make sure they have some kind of outlet for that. Um, they, they're the ones who tend to find themselves on the phone a lot, counseling all their friends, doing all of that. (laughs) Yeah. Um, and then seven energy, seven is the number that, um, it's kind of reclusive. It really values its alone time. It needs that sort of quiet time. Nature and water will always recharge seven energy. So it's important that they have, they have that outlet and they like things that are alive around them. Um, So they're the ones with plants, pets, things of that nature. Um, Seven energy is the investigator. 
they would prefer to ask questions than be asked questions. <laughs> so um, they tend to have a very intense private side. Um, but overall, they're very intelligent, they're very wise, and they never stop learning. They can't get enough information. <laughs> um, and then eight energy, eight is the one that's ruled by money. And you can put a dollar sign right over it if you think of the, the shape of an eight. Um, a lot of times they tend to chase their tail and go round and round. Um, Martha Stewart is an all-encompassing example of the eight. Um, they, they tend to sort of make up their mind and stick to it. They can be a bit stubborn. So she decided she was innocent when she, you know, did that, the whole insider trading thing. Um, she could have cut a deal at any time, but eights tend to learn the hard way. So she decided she was going to dig her heels in and, you know, ultimately ended up being found guilty and going to jail. You can't keep an eight down. They always have total and complete reversals available to them at any time. And so with that, she went to jail. She taught everyone how to bake and sew and made friends with all the inmates, right? Um, you know, got out of jail and just that complete, you know, reversal. She's back on top. She's taking sexy yeah. photos in the pool. She's, <laughs> you know, with Snoop Dogg. <laughs> You know, yeah, yeah. You can't hold her is, down. <laughs> you cannot. No, yeah. that that is the nature of eight energy. And mm -hmm. so what they have to guard against being hypocritical, um, they very much can be do as I say, not as I do. But at a high vibration, eight energy can be um, great leaders, have an incredible business intuition. Um, and really, they like to be in charge. And I always say if they're not in charge, they're going to pretend they're in charge. So eights don't always make the best employees, but they do make good managers. <laughs> so, yeah. And then nine. Nine is the number of the humanitarian. Um, they are more concerned about the for the good of all than any other number. Um, they're very, very smart. It's the old soul number. They have a lot of past lives, very intuitively gifted, and they tend to know a little about a lot. It's hard to stump a nine uh, to, you know, they always seem to be able to, to handle whatever you throw at them. Um, they can be overly generous, almost to a fault, and then they can regret how generous they are with others. But um, overall, they're just very smart. Um, they can their careers tend to be just where whatever else they find interest in because they're really capable of a lot, but they also tend to find themselves in leadership roles. Yeah. When you explain all of them, I feel like I could relate to multiple, not just one. And I'm sure most people can, right? Cause like, right. We're, we're a blend of these numbers. Like how would you explain this? Well, when I look at your chart, you've got, you know, you've got fives, you have a two, you have a six, you have a one, you have a three. So you, when you relate to a little bit to all of them, it's because you have most of them in your chart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Right. So, I, and when you say chart, is it, cause I know what a birth chart looks like, but I don't think I've ever seen a numerology chart. Like what does it tell you as it look like? I mean, I, I make them for people, but they're not a specific um, it's not like a birth chart with lines and arrows drawn across it. You can chart things with lines and arrows, but um, I don't find I don't find all of those very useful. So I just you know soul number. Okay, <laughs> it's so it's just like listing profile. out. Okay, kind of, got it. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Um, and then what I really like looking at for people, and I find this is where people really find numerology useful is when you use it to track your personal year and cycle of time. It's so useful. Like you can just save yourself so much pain. And, <laughs> you know. why, why don't you explain what that is for our listeners, tracking your personal cycles? Okay. So the personal cycle is really easy. Everybody can figure it out. And I'm not sure when this will be airing, but we're sort of just, you know. Yeah, 2023, beginning of January, basically. Perfect timing. Um, so 2023 is considered the universal year. And so you want to take that universal year, which is two plus zero plus two plus three equals seven. And then you want to add your own day and month. 
So for you, it would be October 21st, 2023. Um, that gives me an 11. And so you are in going to be an 11-2 personal year. And sometimes um, 11 is actually considered a master number. So sometimes I write numbers as fractions, and that's because they give me more information before that final reduction. So that 11 is, it, I like to view it as a doorway. It's your invitation to the other side, to a whole new world. Um, and 11 energy is a lot of times people will get married. Um, they'll have a baby. It deals with relationships. It um, deals with partnerships. It's going to teach you about patience. <laughs> it's, um, But it, it really is going to teach you about, you know, mediation, getting along with people, compromise, that kind of thing. But in an 11, two year specifically, there's always a destined event. So Ooh. if people, yeah, it's exciting. <laughs> um, so if people just add their month, their day of birth, and the calendar year, they will have their personal year cycle. And, and so would you define that as like your theme for the year? Yeah, it really like is. what to expect, right? And it's From, crazy okay. accurate. And I know there's um, there's sort of some numerologists use this crazy formula where they take your birthday and add your age and all sorts of stuff. I don't find that one accurate. I've done thousands and thousands of readings. Um, the When we're all under that vibration of 2023, that's what we're feeling. That's what we're dealing with. And so I look at the age vibration as a completely separate number. So, you know, I think I want to say there's 31. Well, 32 now. <laughs> 32 now. Oh, you just had a birthday. Yes. Yeah, I did. <laughs> um, so 32. So that's a five age vibration. So I would look yeah. at that as a secondary theme. Um, and then, Okay. So you're saying that's secondary after your personal cycle. Like the cycle yeah. was the 11, 2, and then under that is a five. For sure. And so five brings change and shift. It involves a lot of media. A lot of times in a five year, people will see their star rise. They'll gain some, you know, I don't know. I don't know how high, how high can you go? <laughs> well, I, I was curious what to expect this year because my life path is a 23 five. So this is like, and, and 23 was a really pivotal year for me. It was a year where a lot changed. And now I'm 32 and I'm like, I know it's the flip. I, I, I know it's going to be important, but I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> is, how do you see that when, when it's like a flip of your life path number? Five year with a, an 11 two. So I almost look at them sort of, I look at them as two separate numbers, but I'll combine those meanings. So I would say for you, there's going to be big changes in relationships, possibly relationship status. Um, I do a lot of fertility dating. I would tell you that you are extra, extra fertile right now. So, <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> plan accordingly. Right? You have okay. the information now. Wow. Um, yeah. So there's different times where it really makes sense to have a baby or have a family, get married. Um, and then there's times where it, it doesn't make as much sense. And those tend to be... You know, like I see a lot of times in, in let's say, a nine cycle um, where people will have miscarriages or like things just don't take root. It's not a great time to start things. So you can look at this and go, OK, what should I be working on? What should I be planning? But an 11 is considered a master number year. And so in this year of change, because of that five, the 11 I would say that there is something, a big destined event, and things will not look the same for you this time next year. Yeah. I, and, and one thing, I've actually made a YouTube video about this concept of personal cycles because I love, like, I have a note on my phone where I went back each year, like one through nine, like what year, because cause you, you kind of, your life goes in cycles. Like a one is a new beginning and the nine is the ending, right? Looking at it retrospectively, it's, it's amazingly accurate. It's crazy. And so when you see that, then you start going, okay, how can I use this looking forward? So yeah, but right now, um, like 2023, when you hit the end of the year, so 2022 for you would have been a one year, and then you want to look at the calendar month. So 
if you add, let's say you're in 2022, November would have been, um, you're adding plus two. So one year plus two for November, because 11, one plus one, two, is a three month. Okay. Then December, you're adding three. And so that would have been a four month. Then the calendar rolls Oh, so over. each month has a different number. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, absolutely. So no, it, it, it's so telling. It's so amazing when you get on this drumbeat and you start planning that way. Is that a separate number from the, the year cycle or do you add that month to? Yeah, you're adding the year cycle. You're adding the month to the year. Oh, to, to get your theme for the month. Yeah. So November, December actually repeats January, February. So it sounds confusing, but I promise you, if you put it on paper, it's not. Just to clarify, if I were to do like Jan, I, I guess, okay, let's, let's do like March of 2023. So you would take 2023 plus your, your birthday month and day, right? And then you would add three for March. Yes. That, that's, that's one way to get there. So a, a little bit simplified, we already determined you're in an 11-2 year. So if we add just the calendar month to that, now we have a five. So you're, it actually shows up as a 14-5. So you could expect big changes in March. Oh, you could also okay. expect like How opportunities. Fun. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know you can break it down like this into oh, the month. I go, I go right down to the day. So, oh, and the hour. <laughs> Yeah, that's a whole nother thing, but you can, but I go to the day. So like for me, the day we're recording this, I tend to try and schedule podcasts or interviews. I try to schedule them on three or five days because three is a communication day and five is really good for sort of self-promotion and marketing. So today for me personally is a three day. So we're recording this podcast. <laughs> I love that so much. And I'm sure everyone's going to be doing the math <laughs> after this episode. You'll notice that if like on a four day where all of a sudden you just start cleaning or you really feel like I need to file all this, I need to get organized, that will happen on a four day and you'll feel the energy, right? But if you're planning... So every day essentially has a different energy and it Absolutely. cycles. Yeah, That is so fascinating. Yeah. Um, okay, so... I mean, my question for you is how much numerology do you do in your daily, weekly, monthly routine? You know, like, are you it. using it? <laughs> you're using it for everything. Oh my gosh. If I'm in my car and I'm driving, I'm like, I'm adding license plates up in front of me. My husband came home today with a receipt and I'm like, oh, did you see your receipt? It was 2222. Like he, it was $22 and 22 cents. And then I went down, I looked at the time and it was 1122. And I was like, this is crazy. But today's actually his birthday. And so I'm like, oh, look at that. Like you're all twos and ones. <laughs> Oh my God. I mean, this brings me to the topic of angel numbers, which I wanted to ask you about. Like, is, is that one in the same with numerology? Like, what do you believe about angel numbers? They are definitely connected. I think there's different takes on angel numbers. Um, there's, I have a couple books where they're just fully channeled. So someone felt into the energy and decided they were going to channel themselves some angel messages about, which is, I think, where that name actually came from um I'd have to know their numbers to see if I believe they were good at channeling <laughs> right <laughs> so, so when I when anyone like let's say in the news right like you're looking at the news um you know is so and so guilty are they innocent like I will just go to the numbers and I'll look and I'll go oh that that guy is so going down oh right? my and gosh you can look and see what cycle they're in and like seven energy, for example, rules the legal system. So if someone is on trial for something and they happen to fall into their seven personal year, and I'll be that guy is so going to jail. <laughs> right. So you can look at different things that way, but you can apply it to your own life by like, you know, if you had something, let's say you had a wrongful dismissal case or something, you could look at this and go, okay, when's the right time to launch this? When should I file papers? Or if you get served with papers, you can look and see how it falls in your cycle. If you're served mm -hmm. with papers under nine energy, I would say, don't worry about it. This will probably go away, won't really get root, like take root. Um, 
But if you were the one serving papers, you wouldn't want to do it under nine energy because you'll never have the gas behind it that you really need to make it happen. Interesting. Yeah. So when you break it all down, you you start living by it. I mean, I've used it for all sorts of things. Um, On an eight day, I had a, I ordered an area rug. And it got delivered and the one of the sides was kind of cut crooked. And I was like, well, this isn't cool. So I used my eight day to call customer service because it's money in, money out. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> Long story short, I get like the best customer service person. And that's another thing I always do. If I have to make a phone call. I always say like, may the person for, you know, my best and I is good answer this phone who can be helpful and, wow. you know, make this as painless as possible. Life so I always set that intention, <laughs> set that intention. I'm going to get the best customer service person on the phone. I did. He asked me what I wanted. And I said, well, I think it's going to cost you a hundred bucks to get this thing back. And he goes, for sure. And he goes, okay. He goes, I took care of it. And I went, I don't, I don't know what that means. And he went, check your email. And I looked and he 100% discounted the rug and told me to keep it. So now there's a couch over that side of it. Yeah. Yeah. So you got what you wanted. (laughs) Well, it was more than I wanted. Yeah. Wow. But that's that Mm -hmm. money in, money out, right? It comes back to you. So you can use it for all sorts of things. So yeah, depending on the purpose, you can yeah plan accordingly. This brings me back to, I mean, does each person have different like lucky numbers or is it kind of just by the situation like you were describing? Well... Lucky numbers are interesting. And I find a lot of times when I'm doing a reading, I'll tell someone their life path number and they'll go, oh, that's my lucky number. Like a lot of people naturally resonate to a number that's part of their profile as one of their lucky numbers. There are cycles that are luckier than others. So three energy, for example, it looks like a couple of horseshoes. That is the lucky cycle. So when you're in a three month or year or even day that's when I'm like if you're at the gas station and they're like lotto today you're like yes (laughs) because you're in a three cycle right um but in saying that people who have a lot of three energy in their charts I've had clients with multiple threes that have won trips um one of them won a truck six figures in the lottery. Wow. Like they are just Yeah, certain naturally. people are really lucky naturally. Yeah. Well, you it's have amazing. some natural luck in your chart. Oh, I um, do? Where? <laughs> but your birthday number, it's a three. Oh, oh, oh you're right. <laughs> oh, what I see in your chart is you also have a four attitude number. And fours believe in hard work. They don't believe in luck. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> you may be blocking your own luck by your uh, belief about hard work. Okay. You're like, they're saying the luck will come if I just let go. You just have to believe in it. If you, well, okay. And the other thing, if you want to talk about your four, fours can get addicted to outcome. Some of my best clients are fours because they always want to know what's going to happen next. So with that four energy, if you really release and go with the flow and just let things naturally happen, a lot of times what you're given is far better than anything you could have imagined. Wow. Yeah. So you've just got to release that sort of control and addiction to outcome and let things magically come into your life. Wow. Thanks. No, I can relate to that. Like learning to let go has been a theme in my life. And a lot of times if I find fours in your soul number, for example, um, those people believe love is hard. These are the people that you hear say things like marriage is hard work. Love is so hard. And they are creating a self-fulfilling prophecy with that. So they need to work on releasing that block and making sure they believe love can be easy, love can flow, love is magical. Right. You're saying even if somebody has this number, they can choose to not have that belief. Like it's not something you're tied to in your life? I think what it can do is reveal some of your blocks and things you maybe have to work on. 
some lessons, some places where, you know, and I'm saying that on the, on the other side, sometimes people have a three there in their soul number and they tend to take their partner for granted. And so then you can say, look, you have a three there. You have to make sure your partner feels appreciated. You have to make mm. sure that they understand you really love it when they do these little things for you, that you're not acting entitled. And so sometimes just bringing it to the attention of the person is enough for them to make that that sort of shift or change. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, no, and there's certain numbers, um, nine energy, the ones with all the past lives, one of their big lessons is learning about forgiveness. And so if they can really learn to release, let go of resentment, that can be absolutely magical. So I say forgiveness plus gratitude um, can pave the way to a beautiful life. Agreed. So numbers are all around us. So what would you say are the most, like outside of your own birthday and maybe name, which are hard to change, there are certain things like your phone number, your house number, all, all these things that are kind of tied to us, right? So do numbers apply to all these things? Absolutely. And, like, why don't you give examples of like, I don't know, are there unlucky phone numbers or house numbers that you would recommend people to change, you know? Yeah, this is where um, where it sort of really goes off the rails with these sort of armchair numerologists that, like, I remember when I first started um, in numerology after reading my very first book that I ever bought, I remember going, oh, I have to change our house number to an eight because I want, you know, I want money. And so I'm going to adjust the house number to an eight, which you can adjust your house number without doing anything illegal or, you know, making the city mad or anything. Or like license plate number, right? People change those things for, for good luck sometimes. Yeah. Well, license plate number, if you, let's say you have an eight car, that one perhaps can cost you money. Same with if you have an eight pet. Um, a lot of times when I look at the names of dogs or cats, if it adds up to an eight, I, I can tell like that's an expensive animal. <laughs> that's funny. Oh gosh, I have to do my pet's name now. Yeah, there's a, there's um, I don't, it's not a whole chapter, but there's something I did, did a little section on pet names in my book. Wow. Um, but yeah, it really does impact you. So what you want to do, though, where you have to be careful, when I changed um, our house number to an eight, that number does not really flow well with my husband or me. And all of a sudden, we were, I don't want to say we were fighting, but he was just like, my tolerance level was dropping rapidly. Like, I was like, this is annoying. Um, but I realized it was that it was that house number, it just it was toxic to his and my numbers. And so once I changed it, all good, everything fell into place. Well, how how do you know if a number is not good for you? You have to look at the entire chart. And so if it's an entire family living in the house, it can get a little bit more complicated. But the always will be a solution or an answer. You can, you know, it's kind of like in feng shui, how there's always a cure. In in numerology, there's always something you can do to help that number or counter it. So, mm -hmm. for example, you have, um, your name is, is a little bit different because while your birth certificate name, which you, you gave me before, um, before we did this, will always reveal your soul contract, when your name starts, you know, when you become like a Brad Pitt or George Clooney, right? And what, what you have like over a million, million subscribers. Well, and then I have my YouTube channel named Lavender. So that must have its own, you know, number. Yeah. And so that has to be, you want to make sure your company name is always in harmony with your name. So when you name a company something that's toxic, this is where everything feels uphill. It's not necessarily destined for failure, but everything will be more difficult than it needs to be. And there are certain numbers and names of companies that suit the business better than others. So if you're like an accounting firm, you might want to give your company like a, a name that adds up to four. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> that is the number of the accountant. Okay. Um, you know, but if you're if you're a marketing agency, you're creative, you're going to want it to add up to five or three. So, OK, that makes sense. Yeah. Wow. There's so many things to think about your Instagram name, everything. 
I'm going to have to look up whether my business name matches my name after this too. So again, is it, is, is it like you're trying to make sure the energies of the numbers are harmonious? Kind of like a three doesn't go with a four versus no, a three a goes three, with a five. A three right? doesn't go with a four. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I think I'm starting to get it. <laughs> yeah. So it's called concords. Some numerologists call them triads. And so three, six, nine is a natural triad, one, five, seven, or two, four, eight. Um, but in saying that, two energy also goes well with six energy. Five energy and three energy generally get along. Um, one and eight is, is generally quite, if it's a relationship, sometimes that's quite hot. Um, they tend to love each other until they stop and then they hate each other. It's like War of the Roses energy, kind of like uh, really intense and then burning itself out. Um, you know, so you have to always look for balance. You want to look at everything involved. I'm just running Lavender. I'm seeing what's happening. I love it. <laughs> She's doing her calculations. I'm doing math. <laughs> okay. like at, every day you're doing math. Your brain is like working. <laughs> no, this is serious true story, grade 10 math, I had to go back and beg my teacher to pass me. I had my final exam. He was more interested in the French teacher than teaching me math. But anyway, he was, he was just, I don't know, I just wasn't getting it. And the irony is it was Pythagorean triangles, right? And Pythagoras is like the godfather of numerology. So had they taught numerology instead of triangles, I would have been fine. Um, but yeah, our school had something called a 50 R. And so I was out of 49.7 or eight and I had to beg him to give me like, just pass me. I'll never take your class again. I promise, you know, but that's sort of the nature of my numbers. I would have like a 98 in one class and a 50 and, you know, like math, physics, chemistry. Right. Like, mm, and now look at you, it. the numbers girl. <laughs> doing numbers Crazy, every day. Right? Yeah. yeah. So Lavender, this is interesting. Yeah, what's um, the number? I'm just looking here. Okay. So Lavender has a three soul number, which is that communication, and it's the same as your birthday number. Ooh, so that means I chose a good a good name. <laughs> yeah, that means you can actually love what you do right? Mm. It can be from the heart. So I like that for you. I love that. Um, and then Lavender, uh, the consonants are four, but you have a four attitude number. And so that actually works for you as well. And that's, that's where I notice your company is very, um, you're very well put together. You're very structured, like everything is like, as it should be. Right. And so that really works for you because you have some four energy in your chart. Overall, that comes to a seven, which happens to be the same as your maturity number. <laughs> okay. And so this means you can have that company for a long time. But seven energy really likes to be the expert in something. And you truly have established yourself as the lifestyle expert, podcaster extraordinaire. So you're good. Wow, that's amazing. But you can <laughs> tell it's also been very successful for you. Yeah, right? it has. Another question, sorry, quick question is Lavender is the name of the brand and the YouTube channel, but like, you know how some companies have like a ink or a, they, they have some like a full name. So for numerology, which one would you calculate based on the brand name or the full, the real name? It's sort of new, numerology 2.0. So when you really get into, um, you know, the real sort of rules and subtleties and little nuances of it. Something like Inc. or LTD or even The um, aren't generally considered part of the name, depending on how it's used, right? Because those are, you don't answer the phone, Lavender Inc. Like, right? right? You're, not, <laughs> yeah. you're not introducing your podcast with, with that on it. And so that would right. really figure into the name calculation when, when you're doing it. Um, but Different numerologists to know. may have a different take on it, but that's what I have found to be most accurate. Amazing. Okay, let's move forward and talk about 2023 as a general theme, because each year has like its own theme for everybody, right? So, well, yeah, tell us what's in store based on the numbers. So 2023 is going to be a universal seven year. 
So if we look back a little, just so people, because I always find in retrospect, people go, oh, oh my gosh, that's accurate. So 2020 was a four year, two plus zero plus two plus zero, four energy rules the medical system. And um, one of my predictions for at the end of 2019 was that we were going to be dealing a lot with medical system, with government, with big banks, um, and that... Um, it was it was a rigid year, right? A lot of rules. Yeah, lots of rules, so many rules. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so that was 2020. If you look at um we're just coming off of 2022, that was a 6 year and uh one of my predictions was that Roe v Wade was back on the table because that is rules pregnancy because remember the 6 is like the little pregnant person. Um everyone told me I was crazy. That happened. Oh my gosh. Um, and then we also had things like baby formula shortages. And I don't know, right now where I live, there's huge Tylenol shortages, um, children's Tylenol and all sorts of other medications. Um, so that's been a theme. Um, and even with education, cause six rules, education, there's been, you know, rules about masking, not masking, you know, going to school, online learning, all of that stuff has still been, um, a big theme for 2022. 2023, we're in a seven year. And so seven energy is that one I said was ruled by nature. And so full on, um, we will hear from mother nature this year. Um, Even now, like there's volcanoes erupting. um, There's earthquakes, there's fires, there's flooding, lots and lots of water issues. So, um, you know, tsunamis, typhoons, hurricanes, all of that is I, I don't think we've really seen anything yet. So wow. that, that's going to be a big <laughs> Brace deal. yourself. Yeah, yeah. I, I said, just make sure you have the insurance you need and, mm-hmm. you know. Anything no for emergencies. Yeah, just be prepared. But there's there's a fine line between sort of scarcity and preparedness, right? You don't want to go full on hoarding mode and put out all that scarcity, then it becomes self-fulfilling prophecies, but you want to be prepared. There's, there's a line there. <laughs> yeah. Isn't seven also like a spiritual number? Like there's a lot of meanings, right? Yeah. Seven rules metaphysics. And so um, I think, I think this year you're probably going to start to see a lot of people. Um, I remember in 20, I think it was 2015 was our last seven year. Um that there was sort of a divide happening. Um, And even now with clients, I'm finding there's a lot of them who are just having their spiritual awakening. So I say this is the divide between the muggles and the magical people. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. There's people that will step onto the spiritual path and really become more interested this year. Uh, That's definitely something that will happen. Um, Mm -hmm. Another prediction I made this year was So I always go back to past seven years and look at what's been going on. So I think AI technology, um, that's going to be, I think we're going from like the sundial to the satellite, like in terms of technology, what's going to happen, it's going to be massive. Um, And then nature is going to offer some kind of cure for some sort of new, new unwanted problem right Mm. but the the cure will be found in nature Um, okay and I think you're going to see a lot of pharmaceutical companies getting into the supplement game and then that will follow with regulation Um, seven energy rules the legal system so I think we're going to be dealing um, a lot with the supreme court and all sorts of things either getting overturned or coming up for you know, more regulation. Yeah. Seven also rules the self, it rules self care. And so it's interesting, just where we are in sort of that um, cycle of everyone with, you know, deciding on pronouns, she, her, him, he. Um, When I think of that mixed with court decisions that I think a lot of those laws that affect the LGBTQ community, that they will be having their day in court. Wow. So big things, 
big changes. I, I guess every year is a big year in its own way. It's kind of like the area of that gets highlighted is different. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but it, it sets up a little bit of a theme. Um, I know I, I just finished my 23 predictions and there um, I went back. I mean, other seven years have brought us things like the first test tube baby, um, which is now commonly known as IVF. But then the big story was first test tube baby born. Um, and YouTube was launched under a seven year. So was Twitter. So I, I imagine there'll be some brand new social media platform. Perhaps Elon Musk is doing something with Twitter. Who knows? Yeah, his new version of Twitter. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Um, yeah, but all of that um, falls under technology. Seven's very technology driven. But it also oh, really likes research. Yeah. Okay. Um, I love how a lot of this really is similar to what you hear from astrology. Like the the similarities, because in astrology, you know, we're moving more into Aquarius, which is also like technology. And so, I mean, how much do you know about astrology and how how do you explain the connections, if, if you can? I consider myself sort of astrology light. I know more than the average bear, but I, I stay in my numerology lane. I There's so many people that are far, far more experienced and better with astrology than numerology. They do complement each other. They seldom contradict, but numerology to astrology is sort of looking at it at, from a different angle. So there's things you can see from certain angles that you can't from others. And so um, that's sort of how I describe their their relationship. But they're both very useful, very important. It's just so interesting to me how they seldom contradict. Like You find that they all make sense put together. Just, yeah, you're right, from a different angle. And it's like, it's so magical. It is. It truly is. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so let's end with some, like, maybe share some actionables for our listeners who want to dive deeper themselves. Where would you guide them? Okay. Um, well, the first thing, the way I feel people can really use numerology to help them is to step into the flow, right? So if you can figure out that personal year number, look at that, what should I be working on? Um, that is something that can immediately affect you and help you sort of shift. Um, if I just went through the numbers, what I what I would like every number to sort of look at and be aware of and sort of an area they can help themselves. Um, for one energy, I would say work on your self-awareness. A lot of times ones aren't really aware of how they're being perceived by others or how people are receiving the information. And it sometimes needs a little sugar on top, right? So I would say ones work on your boundaries, work on respecting other people's boundaries, but also, you know, about sort of the aggression, aggression, assertiveness. Um, for two energy, I would say, work on work on saying no, stop agreeing to things you don't want to. A lot of times they say yes to things that they wish they hadn't, and then they get resentful. So twos can work on that. Um, for three energy, gratitude is so important. Um, they tend to be super lucky, you know, with the VIP parking and the last one on the shelf. And, oh, I wanted that. Now it's on sale. Um, <laughs> so they tend to be very lucky, but it's important that they show gratitude for that so the luck can keep flowing. For four energy... I would say release control of outcome, step into the flow. When you can flow, life gets magical. That is where doors will open and what you find on the other side will be far better than what you expected. Um, for five energy, I say it's time to look outside of the box, color outside of the lines, try something you've never done before. So that's the time where you can really just change it up. Um, I would say the magic happens outside of your box, outside of your comfort zone. So under five energies where you can try new things and guard against being impulsive. Okay. Uh, six energy, um, 
they want to be careful about meddling in things that don't concern them. They are fixers. They love to give advice. They love to fix everything. Sometimes it is not welcomed. So six energy, we love you, but you got to mind your own business. <laughs> okay. Um, but they, they really have so much love to give. It's, it's a beautiful number. Um, and they should get a pet. Six energy needs to have a pet. Um, seven energy, stop overthinking. Get out of your head. <laughs> okay. um, just overanalyzing everything can become self-fulfilling prophecies. So I would encourage both six and seven energy because six is that natural worrier because it's the, that mother's worry, <laughs> that mother's six cent. Six and seven energy, start thinking about what could go right. You know, they're always like, well, what if this happens? And they, you know, what if this goes wrong? What if, let's start thinking about what can go right mm -hmm. for both of those numbers. Eight energy, um, watch, watch the hypocrisy, the whole do as I say, not as I do. Um, you want to just make sure that you have integrity to your word. Um, and a lot of times eights can get caught up in labels. You want to make sure you're not spending money on things you can't afford to impress people you don't know. Just <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, just I would say have some integrity. Be, you know, your word needs to be what you do, what you say. Um, and yeah, they they need a new financial plan, a lot of them. <laughs> So, but that's their lesson, highs and lows. But there's always a comeback in the wings. So they can decide they're, they're going to have a comeback at any moment. Um, and then nine energy, um, that is really rewarded by random acts of kindness. And I would say forgiveness is absolutely the key. And I just actually finished a blog on forgiveness um, energy for that because December 22 is a nine month great time to release and let go clear the clutter a lot of times if you give things away in a nine month you don't regret it so that's, that's a good what, tip <laughs> yeah it's when you hit yes. nine energy that's good time to go through your closet clear some stuff out make some donations amazing all right lastly joy where can we find you online if we want more joyofnumerology.com is my website and that's where you can get you know calendars that break down right to your your day your personal day year month all of that um, or if someone wanted a reading uh, on instagram it's at joy of numerology same as facebook um, yeah if you everything's under joy of numerology so amazing Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge. I had so much fun today. I learned Thank so much. You. I'm going to do that month and day, figure out my number for each day. Yes. Exercise after this. No, I'm going to send you a calendar. You're going to love it. Oh my gosh. Okay, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me.